What if you took the mechanics and general vibe of Dark Souls and infused it with Italian folklore and mythology? Well, Anatri of the Last Song from JAMA Games takes this question to task in a beautiful, scenic, new addition to the Souls-like genre, which they call Summer Souls. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Los Angel of Havoc, a.k.a. Laytato, the one and only high priest of the congregation. Welcome back to Laytato Clips, where we've got a little bit of everything. Now, today, as you might have guessed, we're going to be going over Anatria, the last song. Specifically, this will be a review of the demo that is currently available, but the game will see its full release on September 19th of this year, so we're just a little under two months away. And with this video, I wanted to share a more focused perspective now that I've done a new playthrough and have a better grasp of the mechanics. During my initial playthrough, which I streamed on this channel, I mainly just wanted to experience the journey and what the game had to offer. However, there were some mechanics that I initially did not understand, which led to me taking issue with their implementation. That said, my second time around, I went at my own pace and studied everything I could as I made my way through, and this helped me realize that there were a great many things I missed which ultimately misinformed my early thoughts. This review will have three main points. What does Anatria do that's similar to other games in the genre? What does it do differently? And finally, is it fun? So let's get started, shall we? First, what's similar to other games in the genre? All Souls-like or Dark Souls-inspired games share some common features. With the Natria, we see the Armonia Amber Healing Item, which operates as the game's Estus Flask. It also has a stat system, though they are called Virtues, and the Souls or XP currency is called Memoria. You can also upgrade your weapons, mass, and Ardoria abilities with the appropriate materials and Memoria costs. Enemies have an unraveling meter that can be built up by damaging or parrying them, and once fully unraveled, enemies can be dealt a finishing strike or critical blow, which deals massive damage and can even insta-kill miners. There are some other things that are similar, but they are implemented a bit differently, which brings me to the next part of the video. What does Anatria do differently? Now, I know with so many typical similarities, you might be wondering, okay, Lay, like, it's basically the same as everything else, so what's new about it, really? And I gotta say, Anatria actually does the same thing that games like Lies of P and Lords of the Fallen does. It carves out its own identity within the genre by taking familiar mechanics and reworking them or even elevating them. I mentioned the virtues, which is the stat system, and there are also elemental powers and status effects in Anatria as well. There are four primal elements and four status effects. Viz, which inflicts Dizzy, Fatuo, which inflicts Wicked, Gratia, which inflicts Radiant, and Milano, which inflicts Sickness. Unlike other games where the effects are either outright buffs or debuffs, the effects inflicted by the primal elements actually happen to be both, which I will cover in more detail in a later video. But perhaps the most unique thing Anatria does to set itself apart is introduce the loadout system. Players can have up to three saved loadouts at a time that can be interchanged with the mere press of a button. While loadouts can only be fully edited while resetting at a checkpoint, weapons, gems, and consumables can still be changed on the fly in the player menu while exploring. This allows for flexibility while going through an area, allowing you to essentially prepare for multiple combat scenarios accordingly. Loadouts essentially eliminates the need to have to constantly respect your character to suit whatever build you're going for, and this system actually pairs very well with the masks that you can acquire throughout the game. Each mask provides different gameplay effects, and you can acquire up to six in the demo. I was only able to unlock four, and the full game will have over 30 masks that players can acquire over time. Some masks will drop from bosses after they are defeated, while others can be created by collecting different mask shards, which drop from defeated enemies. Mask shards do appear to be farmable, as in both of my playthroughs, I obtained the Vermiglio mask while killing enemies while working my way through the final area of the demo. Ardore is another feature unique to the world of Anatria. It's described by Gemma as the power of change manifest and the power to alter reality. Now there are areas in the world that can be manipulated through the use of Adore, allowing you to access hidden areas or traverse great distances. Adore also allows you to channel the essence of your enemies in the form of mask lines. Mask lines are Anatria's answer to spellcasting. They can be discovered in the world and or dropped by bosses. Each loadout can have up to four mask lines equipped at once, and they charge up by dealing damage to enemies. 
Initially, I had mixed feelings about mass lines because in my first playthrough, I didn't grasp the mechanic of charging them up by doing damage, and even once you have them fully charged, if you rest at a checkpoint, they reset. However, once I realized they charged based on doing damage, it was much easier on my second playthrough of the demo to take full advantage of my arsenal and mix things up, especially during boss encounters. Now, the demo has 18 mass lines that you can unlock. I was only ever able to unlock 14. The full game should have 40 plus according to the press kit, but I was able to test all of the mass lines that I was able to unlock on my playthroughs. One additional thing I noticed is that different mask lines actually have different charge times. Some charge very fast while others take a little bit more time to build up. There are, however, perks that you can add to your loadout that allow you to charge them up a bit faster at a cost. Now, speaking of perks, this system is called the Path of Innovations and uses a currency called Inspiration that is obtained through picking up collectibles in the game. I do believe this may be loosely related to gathering lore, but the game's compendium section is unavailable in the demo, so I cannot confirm this. That said, the Path of Innovations itself appears as a general skill tree that branches off, and as you unlock perks with Inspiration, they can then be applied to your different loadouts to add unique enhancements to your build. 32 perks can be unlocked in the demo, and the full game will feature nearly 70. Some allow you to buff your weapon with elemental damage once you cast a particular mask line. Others will improve your damage output and or defenses. One of the more unique ones I've found is one that actually allows for enemies to become slightly unraveled when you're dodging their attacks. While there's likely more I could go into, I think the last few items accomplish the task of covering what things set Anatria apart from other games in the genre and allow it to have its own identity. So we'll now get to what I think is the most important part of any game. Is it fun? The short answer here is yes. Without oversimplification, Anatria feels very good. The demo provides a very decent suite of things to try out and does a great job giving tutorial text when engaging with the part of the game for the first time. Enemy engagements have an interesting rhythm, but the unraveling system is fairly simple to get down in comparison to some other games, which I think will allow players to be a bit more inclined to take advantage of it. The parry window is especially forgiving, and even enemies using ranged weapons can have their shots parried. I even noticed that parrying a ranged attack by an enemy would instantly unravel them. It does remain to be seen if that's just due to the level of the enemies in the demo or by general design. I still do wish that mass lines didn't reset when resting at checkpoints, but loadouts provide a workaround to this by giving players the option to create loadouts with both quick charging mass lines and mass lines that may charge a little bit slower. And on top of that, you have the ability to build further into them with the different perk combinations. If you're a fan of the genre, then I recommend at least trying out the demo for yourself to see what you think. Anatria, the last song, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is set to be released on September 19th, 2024, and will be available on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and on PC via Steam and the Epic Games Store. Standard and Deluxe Editions are currently available for pre-order. That's all I have for you for now. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please do me a solid and give it a thumbs up. It might seem like a little bit, but it does go a long way in terms of helping the channel grow. And if you want to see more content like this, do be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next one. Once again, my name is Los Angel of Havoc. Thank you for watching Late Tato Clips. We will see you next time, friends. Same late time, same late channel.